Aha. This meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Prove it. This is how you prove it, son. What you do is you go to Facebook page and you see if it's coming through. Let's refresh that then. Ah, uh -huh, there he is. Dr. Joey D. Rhea Magdalena is watching with you. Rhea, my love. I hope you're well. Hello, hello. Hey, Jesus, how are you doing? Jesus, it's looking good. So um, I've come on a bit early um, because I need to prepare myself very much for my guest who's just about to appear. <laughs> she scares the daylight out of me. <laughs> so I wasn't going to do any lives for a month or two because uh, I could do with the break. Okay, Map, how are you doing? I see you flashing your knickers on the city there, Map. What's going on? Hey, must be the heat, eh? Millie, hiya, Millie, my love. Nikki, nice to see you too. S-Y-O-S, save your own soul. And that's what I learned a long time ago, that there's nobody outside of you who's going to come in and save you. You've got to do that yourself because that's what you signed up for. <laughs> Now, some people might argue against that, but, you know, that's fair enough. Other people are allowed to have their own opinions, but they're wrong. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what a funny week or two. I've never been busier in my life. You know, I've, I've like, and I'm all right, you know, in myself, I've got a sort of a chuckle going on, which I have most of the time, but it has been difficult, to say the least, you know. And I can sort of feel two feelings going on at the same time. There's one that can sense a sort of great big building up of all sorts of angst and anxiety and fury and anger and stuff like that, you know, especially it doesn't help in high heat circumstances. And then there's another feeling that's sort of free and chuckling and all that business. Oh, hang on. Dan Thompson's entered the room. I didn't ask for anybody called Dan Thompson. I wonder who that is. I better let Dan in to see what he looks like. <laughs> She's going to kill me, I can tell. Oh, dear. Louise, I was in Dublin flashing me knickknacks. Yes. Oh, Coral Street's never been the same since. <laughs> anyway, stop laughing, Joe. This hang, is on, hang on. I can't hear you. Um, You've developed a South Country accent. There we go. Oh, shit. I still can't hear you. Oh, that now? There we go. Oh, you did that on purpose. <laughs> Do you know what? Well, Dan's just started drilling. I'm just going to tell him to. Yes. Okay. Oh. Good idea. Oh, dear. Hello, Rebecca, my love. Rebecca, Rebecca Everling Rice from Longview. That's a good place, isn't it? Longview. I bet you can see what's coming a mile off from Texas. Huh? Diggity doo da. Tonya Elizabeth, nice to see you. Elaine Pettit, nice to see you, Petty. Skylar, nice to see you, Skylar. I can't see you, but you know, that's just a it's just a phrase. But I can sense you. You know that one? I'm so spiritually awake that I can sense you when you oh God. What does it all mean? I've got no idea. Hang on, she'll be back in a minute. This person pretending to be Dan Thompson, who really called Lisa Murray. <sighs> Kay, hi, Kay. Nice to see you. If you thought you were hiding, Kay, you're not, because I can tell that you're watching. <laughs> oh, Sorry she about is. that. That's all right. <sighs> Make yourself comfortable. Listen to the sound of my voice. <laughs> relax your shoulders, relax your eyes. Yeah. And just allow yourself to float off into a beautiful, beautiful, peaceful, serene environment. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> right. I've just been toning again. I haven't done that for years. Oh, we'll have to do. We can do all sorts of things. We can do light like... <laughs> We can do all that stuff. We can do anything you like, really. Because 
Who knows what the hell's going on? <clears throat> mm. But I have a sense of that for some reason you and I have worked together yeah. before. Now, I was in a conference yesterday. I, I was given a demonstration and a, a workshop, an hour-long workshop. And it was basically about how if you use breathing in a certain way and you use um, a certain... Hello? Where is she gone? I didn't, I didn't mean to upset you. Hello, Joanne. I hope you're well and your family is well. Send them my regards. I'm just waiting for my guest. She's gone off somewhere. She's probably zoomed off to Aramatena to bring back some helpful, inspirational advice, right, from all those astral and subtle dimensions in the 12th dimension, the reconnection zone. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. There's a line in a book I read and it says, and above all, we must reject fantasizing. And maybe that's what we'll talk about is what's the difference between fantasizing and imagineering or visioneering? And there is a difference. There is there is a difference which we can talk about. Gary, my boy, I hope you're well and I hope you're getting on OK and re -manage, managing to stay cool, calm and collected. Oh, hang on. She's changed her name. I'm going to get the alter ego now. Oh, my God. That's the best version of it I've ever seen. Oh, there she is. She's back again. Oh, no. What are you doing? <laughs> Listen, this is supposed to be, you've got no idea. You know, I'm internationally and nationally renowned in my field. <laughs> and supposed to be a highly professional gentleman, you see. And here I am mucking you about. I, exactly. <laughs> and who's this chief you keep talking about? All right, chief, how are you? You know, who's there? Yeah, I don't know. It's just what I keep wanting to call you. All right, okay. <laughs> so I've got no idea what I was saying. It's going to be one of those conversations. I, I just told the audience that you'd popped off to a place called Aramatena to, to bring some inspirational advice back from those very, very subtle dimensions, you know. So you've got a foot there or two in the 12th dimension, but your head's in the 13th, 14th and 15th dimension, right? <laughs> and the 13th, 14th and 15th dimension, right? They're receiving information from beyond the sun, from the great central galactic sun where all this information's got. I've got no idea what I'm talking about, right? No, and apparently well, you know, I'm a gatekeeper for the great, great central sun. Oh, are you? Mm. Okay. Well, I've been told all sorts of things like um, I'm a commander of the life forces of Adam Matena, right? Mm -hmm. But that's only on a Friday afternoon when I've got nothing better to do. <laughs> you know. But you know, Lisa, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm always taking the Mickey. You know, because that's what I do. And to Same. be quite honest with you. Firstly and foremost, I am a scientist, really. And, yeah. you know, I need, and this is so important in my mind, I need to keep my feet firmly planted in Mother Earth and grounded. Mm. Because I think there's a tendency now, especially with AI coming in, right, there's a tendency that it might drive people further up into their heads and mm. disconnect them from their hearts. And I think, you know, there are people that believe that there are unscrupulous and nefarious forces that are actually trying to distract people away from their body and their true feelings in mm. order to control and manipulate them. But, you know, I keep an open mind on these things, you know, <laughs> and I don't really get involved in any, in any controversy because people have to make up their own minds and they have to make their choices based upon how they interpret information and how they process that information. And where exactly. I'm come to, and I'll give you the go in a minute, where I've come to is... I spent a lot of time in my head in fantasizing. And I read a book, and it's actually called The Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous because that's where I sort of got a lot of information from and still do. And it says, above all, and there's not many above alls in the big book of AA, but on this one it says, above all, we must reject fantasizing. Right, but that doesn't mean that we can't use our imagination and our visioneering from the heart to guide us through what's going on on this planet at the moment. 
So you see, I never know what I'm going to say, but over to you, my love. And by the way, it's so lovely to see you again. It's lovely to see you too. I don't know what I'm saying. I, I'm just, I just keep feeling you coming in like every day. It's like you're dropping love bombs. <laughs> no, don't be at it now. You'll cause all sorts of trouble <laughs> if you say things like that. No, no, but it's lovely. There's so much happening. I mean, the space that we've opened is just magical. And it is interesting because I put out a post yesterday in our local community group for pool. Now, if you've ever been to pool, it's quite dense there and no one can see me. No one can see us yet. No. Which is really, really interesting. And yet someone had put a post out complaining about local youths or whatever, and everyone jumps in and everyone's got something to say. And it's so it is very, very interesting. And the only people at the moment that find me, I'm, I'm just actually enjoying the ride, you know, because the ones that do find me are like we had a guy in his 70s came in today and he was dowsing our, our soaps for his wife. Right? <laughs> So Dave the Dowser, and he he um, he has people from all over the world coming to him for assistance for their pets, and he's going to be running workshops with our children on dowsing. Now, how cool is that? Well, there's no coincidences because that's part of my journey too. That over yeah. 25 years ago, I joined a society called the Radionics Association, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a scientist, you know, and I got this big feeling, go to this radionics conference. I didn't even know what radionics was, you know. So I end up going, uh, as you do, you just turn up, don't you? Yeah. And they say, oh, a new person. And what do you do? I said, I've got no idea. Really. I've just got a feeling to come along. And then they got all these pendulums out. Now, these are highly technically made pendulums, the good ones, you know. And they yeah. said, well, what you can do with this is you can dangle it over your body and you can find out where the energy centers are. Well. Funnily enough, a few years before that, I was in Glastonbury and a book jumped out at me called The Subtle Anatomy of Man, right? Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated by it because, I mean, I'm, I'm trained in anatomy and physiology and medicine and all those sorts of things. But I kept getting this thing is, Joe, there's much, much more going on, right, yeah. below the surface or in a way that most people are not even aware of. This is the 1% mm -hmm. world. And there's 99% of stuff going on in these other dimensions. Now, I know now that they're called the morphogenetic and the morphic fields and, you know, mm. and then I got into something called integrative medicine, which then brought me into a subtle energy medicine. And that's what I am these days is I'm a <laughs> subtle energy medicine practitioner, you know, and Brilliant. just as you know, Lisa, what that is, is I don't really go with what my five senses pick up. I go with what my heart feels, you know, yeah. and that's how that's how I navigate my way through life. Uh, and I go with a feeling and it's almost like my heart puts out and it goes, eh, eh, you know, mm -hmm. that means mm -hmm. you won't be working with this person at the moment. Right. Yeah. But but never say no. Right. And then yeah. I'll meet somebody else. Right. And it'll just go whoo, and open like mm. like like me and you for example you know exactly yeah and a few other, and i don't even question it anymore and my heart opens fully and it's like a, an age-long connection from a long time yeah. ago where we were working together and we've come back to complete this part of our soul's journey mm. over to you <laughs> that's it that's how i do everything and like when i when i do the the the, the teachings working with the children the teachings just come in in the moment so I don't plan anything and everyone that comes to me you know I just the, the, like you say the heart just tells me everything I need to know everything it is wild it's my beautiful talk my talk yesterday was called um I'll give you the scientific title and I'll give you the second page it was called the scientific role of the heart in reducing cognitive overload and creating space for inspiration and insight right and i thought i'll put that in and see what they did well they loved it right because the second page says the heart has its reason of which reason knows nothing right <laughs> and that really jumped out to me it was a 16th or 15th century philosopher century philosopher who was a polymath that meant he was he had uh, multiple dimensions open all at the same time what's his right? name Blaise Pascal, his name was Blaise okay. Pascal. Not with him. Mm. Yeah, and um, 
by the way, there's a lot of French stuff coming in at the moment. I think we've, you know, and we've done this before. And my friend, Janine, who was on here a second ago, um, you know, we've talked about this in the past about Le Dauphin and Le Roi Soleil, you know, and Versailles and all that. And that energy, that golden energy is floating mm. around. Now, yesterday, I mean, I, I sort of have colleagues who are all, they're all professors, really. And the, there's professors of medicine that I was talking to yesterday, professors of psychology, professors of education. And, you know, some of them were like listening for the change, you know. And one of them says, well, isn't this what you're talking about? Something called transpersonal psychology. I said, funny, you should say that. <laughs> so there's a lead in, you see, in academia, right? Yeah. In the Royal College of Psychiatrists, they have a special interest group that I've worked with in the past. And it's called the Spirituality or Transpersonal Psychology Group. Now, if anybody's watching, if you want to Google Royal College of Psychiatry, and look at the special interest group, right, on spirituality, there's loads of articles that are right up our street. Because there's one about psychosis, right? Is it a precursor to spiritual awakening? And yeah. we know that it is. And I also know, Lisa, that there's a lot of people who are undergoing really psychotic conditions now, and mm -hmm. they're being medicated for it. And I'm not opposed to medication at all, because I believe that we need to work with everything at the right time, in the right concentration for the right condition. I've got no problem with that at all. I'm not mm -hmm. fighting anything because I think that medicine has got good points. You know, I think that everything's got its good points if it's used for the right purpose. So just to go back to this bit, right? I've worked with people and I've been to many of their conferences and, and the radionics conference as well where radionics are talking about subtle energies over here. The Royal College of Psychiatrists is talking about different dimensions over here. And the medicine is just talking about medicine. Yeah. <laughs> so go on <laughs> at then. At the moment. Yeah, at the moment. But it's definitely, because I, I made this prediction yesterday, because I mean, I have a laugh when I go there and throw a few stones in to see if anybody's taking the bait, you know. And I said, I can predict that maybe in the next two to five years, medicine as it stands now, will be completely and utterly gone and they all go and i said and i think that medical physics will be the way forward right mm -hmm. and so all these things about quantum and quantum consciousness that's going to be the way forward and they all look at each other what's he going on about you know you see okay. i know in my heart i'm not a big head because i mean i i'm getting information all the time you know mm -hmm. but i know in my heart that things are going to change like mad over the next few years rapidly yeah yeah god it's moving fast now it is moving fast it is and i think remaining emotionally calm but not by suppressing and repressing and mm. containing emotions that's not the way to remain calm mm. the way to remain calm is open your heart and allow all these condensed atomic energies to come up and be transformed through an open and flowing heart and that is about expressing who you really are and who you've allowed yourself to be compressed because it's all part of a journey of self-mastery and soul's progress. It's how have I allowed myself to be disempowered here? How have I given my energy away? Please show me. And you're asking your intuition, you know, whatever you want to call that. Please show me the actions that I need to take in order to allow this energy right, to come out in a regulated and beneficial way. Because if you take drink and drugs, what that does is there's no regulation about the amount of energy that you can contain. Sometimes it spills out and causes murder, or sometimes you keep it in and it causes murder in that direction as well, you know. Mm. I've got no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm sure people will understand. The trees help. The trees really help. Like, I, my crown keeps opening really, really, really big time most days now and it, it can be a bit too much sometimes and i just yeah just go and sit with the trees just breathe with, with with the trees just for a few moments it's really really helpful i'll send you the pdf of the conference um communications right and mm. yesterday it gave me a lot of hope because it was about the effect that ai is going to have on the educational system 
And then okay. they talked about things called forest schools, right? Oh, did they? Yeah, they were... Oh, see, here it comes. <laughs> here it is, here it is. They talked about forest schools. It was an Italian um, professor, uh, or an Italian PhD, who was talking about the effect that forest schools had not only on the children, because these were initial primary school teachers, these, and I thought, I must tell Lisa about this, right? Mm -hmm. But they were talking about the effect that it has on the teachers as well, you see. Yeah, and, and almost. And what they said was that they don't really have any agenda other than reasonable health and safety sort of things, but there's mm -hmm. no agenda. And they basically allowed a child, so it was child-led. And I thought, you see, there it goes. <laughs> so 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 in academia as well it's coming up but there was also a sense of oh hang on a second you can't do that right you've got to have all these rules and regulations in place because health safety and security are important and that's the trap that's the trap else Elf, elves are important <laughs> well elf elf yeah elf safety and joy and fun elves <laughs> are important <laughs> right. But I know this because I look at my grandkids now, especially the youngest one, Theo. Right. And I look in his eyes and I can see straight through to his soul. And he's looking back as if to say, get out of the way, Al fella, because we're coming through. <laughs> we're we're coming through. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. Go on. Say something now. I have a drink of my coffee. <laughs> say something inspirational from um, Adam Atena. I tell, I've got so much coming in, but I need to process it because it's it's really quite big. Um, and so I don't know whether, you know, the information I'm receiving at the moment is accurate, but it is it is quite big. And I'm shown, I can talk about the sol this solstice. There's going to be, the, we're going to have a big, big, big blast, big blast of light. Um, and the, there's say to talk of it's being seeded in the south now i do know i invited you to it today but i think you're feeling called to glastonbury aren't you for the solstice yeah yeah i'm i'm going down there next week yeah yeah 3 33 in the afternoon on the love it <laughs> but yeah there's a there's a really big gathering here in dorset on tuesday i think it is um and it's you know diana cooper and all that crew and it's, I think there's uh, oh, to a bit, uh, probably about 300 people going, I reckon, maybe more, maybe 333. And yeah, it's I, it's really interesting because what I'm being shown is a big orgasm <laughs> or heartgasm. Yeah, yeah. That is, that is happening and it's and it is going to flood everything and everyone with love. Yeah. So it's well, going to be a game. I got told that this is the summer of love. I got told that, you know, it's almost like a, a recycling of the 60s. And that's why I feel it so strongly, because that's the time I was brought up and I was brought up with all that sort of thing, you know. And so it's almost like a sort of recirculation. But it's not really. It's a it's an evolution rather than a revolution, because, I mean, I listen yeah. to the songs from the 60s, you know. Um, and and the, the words they were saying then were so important, but they apply yeah. equally now. Yeah. But I think I think that there's more more people awake now and there's more oomph behind them, right, in order to sort of get that tipping point really on its way really now. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know some of these people. I mean, people say to me, do you know so-and-so? And so I don't really know anybody. You know, I just I just say hello, love, or I am mates, you know, if I'm allowed to say this. I mm -hmm. don't really sort of know, like, um, big people in the uh, spiritual environment, really. No, me either. I'm, no. I'm chuckling because I'm picturing you doing the bump. <laughs> oh well Christ I was I am I am still the bump champion of Birkenhead oh, yeah. me yeah honestly and <laughs> honestly me and my mate Gary we used to practice it you know like girls do the practicing but we used to practice you know the bump doing the bump together right and we used to, yeah you know everybody was kung fu fighting you know and all that sort of <laughs> yeah. but um Come on, let's do the bump. Yeah, it's all coming back to me now. But seriously, I am the bump champion of Birkenhead because me and Gary used to get on the dance floor, do all this, you know, with people clapping. And we always used to win a big magnum of champagne. That was the reason, really. It was like we were dancing because I love dancing. Right. Yeah, but you'd, win, you'd win the ale as well, you know, and stuff like that. It was great, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
I, God, I love well. Dorset as well, by the way. I know I know Dorset reasonably well, and I spent uh, yeah. when I was young. I mean, go, going to Weymouth and on my way to Jersey, you know. And um, I'm still barred from Jersey. We got we got all thrown off. Yeah, we got told <laughs> never come back again and darken our shores, you know. So, so yeah, well, it was. Yeah, that, these are, I was a touch wild in my youth. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> you, you probably can't believe that with me being such a professional person. Now. <laughs> You're very good. Master of disguise. Oh, absolutely. Disguise. Yeah. <laughs> Judy in disguise. Yeah. So, um. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I do feel more than ever that we're being looked after. You know, yeah. we're not saints. In fact, when we were um, pretending not to be saints, a lot of the information that we gathered in that side, if you like, the dark side of the moon, right, mm -hmm. is coming really, really um, to the fore now. Because mm -hmm. I think if you've been in it, right, you can smell it a mile off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. think that that's going to be absolutely necessary now uh, to smell or to sense who you can work with and who you can trust, you know. Yeah. And of course, Lisa, you know, we're going to make mistakes. I mean, because we're only learning. You know, mm. people say to me, what, what shall I do here? I've got no idea. I can only point you back to your heart, feel the way your heart, what do you mean? What do you mean? What my heart's telling me? Hang on a second. Shut your gob. Just shut your gob. <laughs> right. Just feel this here can you feel what's that funny feeling go with that feeling and start to inquire hello heart what are you trying to show me now people who are listening to this who are, who are scientifically inclined they'll be thinking he should be back in the psychiatric department well yes maybe i should but i've never felt more free yeah. never felt more forthright mm. uh, but i'm definitely not a saint you know you're all right. <laughs> yeah, and, and I do feel that, you know, sometimes I feel in, in the um, the chelontic science sort of aspect of things, which which I actually believe wholeheartedly up to a point, you're right. I think that there are people who have maybe come here on a redemption contract, right, to mm. make up for the shit that they've done millions of years ago, you know, a sort of, and I've got a feeling that I might be one of them, you see, because... Lots of people have like pink and nice orange dragons guiding them. I've got this big black bugger, right? He's oh, like yeah, with Batman. the long fingernails or something. Long claws. red claws, right? Yeah. And he comes in and he goes, <laughs> all right, son. <laughs> you know, and I used to see this thing. I used to see this mm. thing when I was a child, right? And mm. I used to be terrified. Right. Mm. Because at six and seven years of age, I had a recurring dream for months and months and months that I was falling down the stairs and this black thing with this trident was going to like make me toast at the end of it. You know what I mean? And I realize now I'm not afraid. I don't believe in demons as such. I believe that whatever turns up on our plate, we attracted that at some deep level in order to learn what we need to take action on next you know and i call that lisa acting upon information received and love it love, absolutely. love the, the cuddly demon absolutely you know because people talk about internal demons i think that once you love your internal demon mm. they switch and they start to look after you then in ways yeah. that you can't possibly realize and understand really true really true yeah and it is, I think, when you, when you mentioned before about um, be, be ones that are put in the psychiatric wars, psychosis, yeah, yeah. because when we start to remember the soul, that's how it feels. And I certainly went, you know, and, 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 and I had friends drop me because I went fucking nuts. Yeah, and you yeah. do, you know, you do, because you're suddenly downloading all this stuff and you're trying to talk about it with ones who have no clue what you're on about. You don't know what you're on about because you've got no one to talk about and you do feel very alone with it. So that's why these conversations are really important because we can come out and we've been through it, move through it. And we are here, you know, you're up on stage giving talks to all these medical professionals. I'm over here building my own school, you know, and this is the one that many just thought was absolutely fucking batshit crazy. Yeah. And it's 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 really important that we do come out and talk about this because 
it's not going to be as difficult for everyone as, as some of us went through i don't think but it's... oh no no i think that there's a certain sort of um leading charge of what they call sin suckers we're like called sin suckers we're <laughs> almost like the hoovers you know what i mean and i think what they say is people like ourselves you know not no, not it's no. nothing special please believe me it's nothing no. special but people like ourselves are really the very, very sensitive canaries in the mind, in yeah. the minds, you know, yeah. or the minds, basically, you know. Mm. And mm. I see that we're almost like the um, the spiral cleaning thing that's unblocking the tubes, you know, mm. so that people sort of can, um, you know, navigate more freely, really, without having to go through all the shit of unplugging things, really. Yeah. Well, you know, I I don't know, you know, and I and I, oh, right, Christ, whatever you do, don't don't put people on on pedestals because you know you will find that they'll fall flat on their ass. And if you if you if you seriously follow somebody else's advice, I would suggest that's probably not the right way to go round. Is is mm. is that the way to go is inwards for information? It is. You know. Yeah. But by all means, listen to everything that's coming in, but allow it to come in, sink in your heart. This is the way I do: sink in my heart mm. and feel. Is this correct for me? And generally is, if I get like, if I ask the question, is this the right thing for me? And I get an open flowing feeling and a bit of enthusiasm, then that's the way that, that's what I choose. If I get a, uh, that's like, no, no, that's not the path, Joe. Just yeah. turn the other cheek and look the other way because it's over there, you know. Mm. Yeah, and it gets easier and easier, doesn't it? It becomes second nature then. It does become your nature again, just yeah. to keep following that. It, it does, and, and I think that's interesting, the second nature, but as you say, nature again. So you, you get restored to your essential nature, don't you, where there's no mm. obstructions, really, or there's there's less obstructions, and it's almost like the cleaning force, or this great big tsunami of cleansing that's coming in. It brushes the shit off as it's coming at you then. You know, yeah. I, I've got like the, I've got that river, you know, the, Mo, was it Moses who did the, I of the, the sea. Red Sea? Well, I've almost yeah. like got that happening to say, you know, walking along, you know, and as he's walking along, the sea's just parting like that, you know, and letting him go through, you know. Amazing. The Corpus Callosum Road or something we'll have to call it. What's that? The Corpus Callosum is actually the midpoint. It's the middle point that splits the hemispheres of the oh. brain, yeah. And what that is, is it's, it's, in my mind, I see it like a telegraph pole and it's yeah. got the seven in, it's got the seven major spinal chakras, but it's the components of them in the brain itself. And mm -hmm. what actually happens is the communication is supposed to go from right hemisphere to left hemisphere. It's supposed to be acted upon in the left hemisphere. The feedback from that action goes back then across the telegraph pole to the right. So it's an infinity loop. But what's actually happened is some of those um, telegraph poles or some of those communications have been short circuited or even obstructed. What's actually happening now is they're all being reconnected and rewired right back to the essential information processing. I've got no idea. Well, someone will have to write that down, you know, but how do you do it? Yeah. How, how do you do it? It was basically you go, you put your hands on your heart like that and you go, I've got no idea here. Yeah. So, so can you just give us and you get a feeling like <clears throat> i'm listening to you that's your heart talking or your soul right you get a feeling like we have a connection right <laughs> right and you go excuse me i'm a bit confused here and i don't know what action to take could you give us a clue i'll i'll leave it now i've asked the question right so i'm just going to get on with me day and if you could possibly find some way to give me a really clear clue i'd like that very much please and you're going down your day and it's almost like you see signs, turn left, and you meet somebody, hello, son, why don't you turn left, you know, and, and you think, <laughs> why is everybody telling, you know, I'm a bit thick, why is everybody mm. telling me to turn left? And I, and then about an hour later, oh, maybe I've got to turn left, you know, so it takes a while for the information yeah. to get through. I've got it for my shop now, I keep thinking, so the, the company that's, that I buy my supplies for my candles are based in Scotland. I literally think of what I want and lit the week later they've created it now. <laughs> it's just yeah. amazing. Really amazing. But I, I think that's what they say is be careful what you wish for or think yeah. of or pray for. But, you know, not in a fearful way. You can't, you can't be like monitoring your head all the time. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it just becomes neurotic. You know, you've almost like because I think that you have to have a certain amount of hard power that powers mm -hmm. the thinking. You see, I think that's how it works. So, yeah. 
you know, what, what I, my talk yesterday was really about what information's coming into your brain, it then percolates into your heart then, right? And then the heart it processes it and sends it back to your head. So that's another loop. So not only have we got that one, we've got a north south one as well. So there's the cross. OK, so the thing is, this is what I've been shown, taught or whatever's telling me these things is what your heart gives out. Will draw back to you the next day, the stage and the players and the scenery where you have to take a certain action to actually progress on this pathway. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're not listening, right, you'll just keep getting the same old ground dog scene until you take a step back. You'll either be in yeah. pain, you'll be shattered, you'll be discombobulated in some way. So you sit down and you say, I wonder what's going on. <laughs> and you go, right, all you have to do is take the chair from the stage and put it over there and that'll clear your path to the next scene. And that's how my life is now. It's one scene after another. And how do I know whether mm. I'm getting it right or, or wrong? Well, if I'm getting it wrong, it will stay obstructed. I'll feel the disturbance. right? Yeah. And then I'll have to step back and say, excuse me, can you show me what I need to do, please? <laughs> right. And, you know, that's how my life is now, really, you know. Yeah. And it is, it's the, the self-love. So, you know, the Magdalene teaches about self-love. And when, when we do take that really seriously and really, really, really love ourselves, all of ourselves, every bit, every flaw, beautiful flaw, our perfectly imperfect ways, that's when our outer reflections, they just, they just get more and more and more and more beautiful and miraculous. They do. I, I agree entirely about... I think some people get the love thing mixed up, you know, and mm -hmm. I think self love is about self care. And the way I see it is that's as being a tiny little frightened child within me. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, as Joe, the adults have to go back and walk hand in hand. Right. Yeah. And initially start to encourage, it's like a sensitive anemone, right. Start to encourage the child to come out, to have trust in me now, as I grow in confidence, and then what seems to happen then is as the child starts to grow, the information from the child comes through and starts yeah. to teach dad as well. So there's all these, you know, people call it working with the inner child. But yeah. I think in the end, and I, I honestly and sincerely believe this with all my heart and soul, that the children next gen or even they're in now, right, they're coming through clean. But I also I honestly feel that all children come through clean but we get battered by society, right? And they get pinned down, but that's changing now. And I think people like us, you know, uh, and Kate Lumley, you know, Kate the Hartist from, from Texas and, um, and Make a Pathway Louise and all the friends that we've got, you know, I think that they're beginning to understand now that the educational system needs to turn upside down. It needs to be child-led and heart-centric, you know, and, and, Carl Rogers said this, right? Carl Rogers, humanistic psychologist, he said that we're born sort of clean, but from the day we're born, basically, right, we get conditioned and programmed into societal values, and it really directs us away from who we are to be something that they want us to be, you know. And Pink Floyd and The Wall and all these things, that's what they've been going on, on about for a long time. Yeah. Okay, my heart keeps wanting me to ask a question. So <laughs> what can you tell us about the Immaculate Conception, Joseph? Yeah, it's well, the Immaculate Conception is something that's spiritual, not physical. And that's the mis that's the misunderstanding, really. And it's a misunderstanding about sex as well. There's physical sex and there's sacral sex as well. And sacral sex isn't sex because sex is to do with physical, but the yeah. sacral energy is to do with the second chakra. Right. And people are beginning to understand that we've maybe wasted a lot of energy going forwards when really we just needed to stop and allow the energy to turn around and go up our spine rather than falling out onto the floor. You know, so it's about it's about spirituality. It's about a different dimension. A bit of, it's subtle energy. And it's really there's nothing wrong with physical sex, obviously, because that keeps the, the human race going. But I think through various marketing and manipulative forces, there's been more emphasis placed upon it 
you know, mm. than, than it deserves, really. And the thing about instincts is, and it's a powerful instinct, right? The thing about instincts is that when you satisfy an instinct, it's pleasurable, right? Mm. Okay, so mm. pleasure drives instincts or the satisfaction of instincts. But if you keep priming it all the time, right, sometimes you have to do other things to try and get the feeling that you once had in the beginning. It's hard to explain this in a way, but I think people will get it. But comes a point when the feeling for the physical side of things turns around and you start to see things in a different way. Yeah, yeah. And so when the energy in Kundalini, and there's there's an even more subtle one called Kundare energy, once you start to allow the energy without without wasting the energy in the front, right? If you catch my drift, <laughs> if you allow it and sit with it, what it will do is it will turn up, it will turn round, and it will activate the spine and it will cleanse all the chakras on its way up and out and through the crown chakra. But you've got to sit with it and maybe not overutilize it, you know. There's, there's nothing wrong with the, the, that itself, but it's when you uh, keep dissipating the power, it doesn't have the, the necessary thrust to go all the way up the spine then. So to go back to your question, you know, um, the virgin side of things is pre-Kundalini awakening, really. Mm -hmm. And it's just a 3D thing. Mm, very cool. Thank you. No, that's all right. And, and, and the thing about it is as well is in the act of physical uh, sex, sometimes it can be that powerful that you can actually have, uh, you call it an orgasmatronic experience. So mm. not only do you get a sort of lower body orgasm, but sometimes by accident, most of the time, it actually floods your crown chakra. You can have a cosmic consciousness and you think you've met your soulmate, but it was just like, you know, it happened. <laughs> it happened while you weren't paying attention, really. But the whole thing about... Um, the Karma Sutra and things like that is it's about really uniting the physical and the spiritual bodies really and allowing them to, to move in harmony slowly with full awareness because as you get into that understanding um, you almost lock on the seven chakras and you can feel that and once you've sort of locked on those seven chakras it's like all those gates open up and whoosh out comes cosmic consciousness but in this day and age, it's uh, we've used the expression David Bowie did, wham, bam, thank you, man. You know, mm. it's just like a short, sharp uh, experience, you know, mm. and um, mm. it has a certain pleasure aspect to it. But once you can sort of uh, let go of that, the need, the need for that and just allow it to start to guide you, <clears throat> things change completely, really. Does that make some sort of sense? It does, yeah, and I'm seeing now, thank you. So when, when in the old schools they were teaching sex education to our children, this is what should be taught. This is what should be being shared. I, I agree because, I mean, we don't know about energy. We don't know about subtle dynamics. And I keep getting is, Joe, even the physical bodies of the children need to be looked after because most children in this day and age are born physically impaired from the start, you know, you know, through um, through the lack of nutrition, proper nutrition during the mm. gestation period. And we talk about yeah. gest gestation, you know, <laughs> but, but mums, especially when they're impoverished. Right. The the liquor amnii, the amniotic fluid. Right. Which provides a lot of the nutrition is deplete of vitamins and deplete of. But the most important thing is the mum's emotional state when she's carrying yeah. the child. It's that it's that yeah. plug. You know, it's like a space station, isn't it? It's like the yeah. connection. To this developing embryo fetus but what's actually happening is energy is coming in from the cosmos right but it's misdirected because if the mum's afraid or the mum's not in good condition this is not a, any blame thing it's just a misunderstanding so mm. mums have got to be loved throughout the whole process yeah so the conception process has got to be loving right because mm. because believe it or not the emotional state of the couple at conception impacts upon DNA coding, right? Yeah. So it's all about love this. But when I say love, I don't mean uchi kuchi. I mean open, honest, clean communication, Your full love. energy flow. Yeah. That's what's going to bring the information in through, right? And it's going to yeah. sort of, um, it's going to enhance the cleansing up and the cleaning up of the world that we're in at the moment. Yeah, so when I sat with the sweet chestnut tree today, she showed me, I was sat with her, and again, I got the sense that there is a soul waiting to come in, and um, 
she showed me how we do this. So we can have the, I don't know if this, this must have used to happen, where we have women's circles or even men involved as well, but they're all, the whole village is, is involved in the welcoming of this soul coming in. And they all speak to the soul. They all celebrate the arrival of this soul. So this soul is coming in in the, like the most loving, loving world possible. And the soul will already know all of these people. And it, it, that thing, it takes a village to raise a child. This is what she was showing me another level of this. So I was being shown up like a big ceremony, a big, uh, even before conception has happened, you can, <laughs> you can hold ceremony. So there's, there's a lot coming in. Makes perfect sense to me. Because I mean, I, I've got taken back years ago to the Dogon tribe, you know, mm. and the, the Dogon tribe are influenced very much by Sirius, you know, and the Sirius yeah. A and B, which is supposedly a binary star. But I get Joe, the Sirius C as well, and that's really the most important, you know, yeah. and scientific astronomers are saying that it doesn't exist, but I keep getting, tell them it does, Joe, because they'll find out. And I get, that's well, okay. we were. Yeah, and I'm thinking, you see, because because I honestly do believe, you know, that you do pick your parents before you come here. You pick yeah. your family groups because the soul has a specific curriculum that it comes mm -hmm. down to um, act in, act upon, act with and all that sort of thing. And I think that that's what's happening now. Our souls, it's all about our souls, you know, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of them knocking about, you know, but our souls have come here with a specific purpose. And that's not just a few of us. That's not just 144,000. That's every single person on this planet, right? Yeah. Is a key to help this world to become a better place, right? Mm -hmm. And if you want to call that inspirations from transpersonal consciousness, I'll say, no, it's not that. It's inspirations beyond transpersonal consciousness. This has got nothing to do with memory or anything like that. This is coming into stuff that's never been thunked by a human being before. You know, and creativity really means a novelty means new. It doesn't mean to regurgitate and recycle the stuff that we already know. That's just a market employee called rebadging. Right. Mm -hmm. This is not about rebadging this. This is about sitting quietly, opening your heart, opening your head and almost like saying to the universe or to this greater intelligence, give us a clue. And then yeah. wait to see what drops in. And the weirder, the better, because I think take the weird stuff, allow it then to come down into the human mind and then allow the human mind to transmit the information in a simple way that most people can comprehend. Because mm -hmm. Einstein said, you know, if you can't explain it simply, then you basically don't know what you're talking about. And that's mm. true. And blinding people with sciences to use great big long words like yeah. psycho, neuro, endocrino, immunohematology, right? And someone says, what's that? You go, I don't know, I've just made it up. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's to be able to say psycho, neuro, endocrino, immunohematology, and to be able to explain, it's the way that the mind processes information, it's perceptual mechanisms, how that then transmits information through the nervous system down to the endocrine glands, how the endocrine glands, based upon the signals that they're receiving from the mind, will ex secrete exact amounts of biochemical substances, which will impact upon the way stem cells work, which will impact upon the way our DNA expresses itself or something like that. <laughs> oh, you're a joy. I can't wait for all the children to meet you. <laughs> well, I do. You know, it is about having a laugh because, you know, I was a joker as a kid, you know, and I had that knocked yeah, out of me, yeah. honest. You know, I had it knocked out of me to say, be serious, get your own work done and all this sort of business, you know. Yeah. But I just like, I used to get lost in the park and stuff and they'd see me like Dolly Daydreams, you know, dreaming, talking to the trees and all this business. I used yeah. to get, get in late to school, you know, and I get the strap for being late, but I used to just sort mm -hmm. of, get directed mm. away from uh, ordinary curriculum stuff, you know. Yeah. I, I've said to them yesterday is, I said, can anybody see that um, what we're doing really is we're falling into a trap? Isn't it that we need to just dispense completely with a core curriculum? <laughs> oh, God, who's this? Right. But it, but it's truly, said, isn't it? We need to allow it all to dissolve. Yeah, yeah. For the true teachings to then come through and come through our children. Yeah, yeah.
because as I've said to you before, is that what I see in my mind as well with, to do with physiology is that the heart is intricately connected to the 12 cranial nerves. Now, the 12 cranial nerves, they basically operate the way facial muscles move, although it does other stuff through the vagus nerve. But the, the way you hold your face determines your mood and your mood determines your thinking. Right. And that's true, you know. So if yeah. you're relaxed in your face and you've got a bit of an inner grin going on, Right. Yeah. You're actually developing new positive pathways. But the 12 cranial nerves, this is what I've been shown in my mind. The 12 yeah. cranial nerves connect to the 12 meridians and the 12 yeah. meridians, they're invisible and they work off more subtle energies, mostly magnetic, you see. So the heart pumps out a magnetic energy, which influences the nervous system, which changes the way our body's biochemistry works, which changes the way our stem cells work, which then which changes the way our DNA is encoded or expresses itself. You know, simple. I love it. And this is why I run magic potion classes for children ages three to 300, because when we play, it changes everything. I mean, they say as well, if you smile, that actually changes. Well, that's exactly what you just said. But it's, it's not a false smile. Okay. Oh, it's so lovely to see you. It's <laughs> got to be heartfelt and wholehearted. You know, it's yeah. got to be an open and flowing heart. You know, like when you see certain people, your heart goes woof. And you go, yeah. Oh, ah, yeah well, <laughs> you know, should have seen people trying to hug at this conference. I went to, it was like standing about six foot away, you know, making oh. sure that your hips were back, not forward and all this. But I was like, you know, oh, flipping heck. You know, what's going <laughs> on with this strange world? You know, it's it's very peculiar. But, you know, yeah. and there's another thing is people say to me, you know, you, you, you know, you're bringing negative and they're saying the world's shit. No, the world, as it's projected at the moment, is mostly shit. Right. But listen to the next bit before you jump in oh, and judge me. Listen to the next bit. However, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. If each individual can realize that they've got a purpose and a positive purpose and start working towards that. Then as groups get together, that energy will start to come out like a, a tidal wave and that yeah. will start to clean the way up. So what I'm saying to you is be realistic. I honestly don't believe that you can sit there. Now, you know, Lisa, I could be wrong and I'm not trying to put anybody down, but to sit there and send out love and light, right, without taking any action, I don't think works personally. Right. Thank you. But, you know, and, and, and like I'm always saying is I could be wrong. You know, maybe I'm so far down this supposed <clears throat> spectrum of Jacob's ladder that, you know, mm. people like that might be saying, oh, you'll learn in time, Sonny. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but you see, this is where I am at the moment. This is what I feel, you know, and I, I say this me to people too. and they say to me, I feel the same way myself, Joe. Yeah. You know, because I, because I, yeah, I, I hear these conversations, and then, and then, then it's followed by complaints that nothing's landing in the lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you do need to take action, and and oh my god, you know, if I've done all of this, I said to you last time, I've done all of this without any money. Yeah. And literally just by can't just staying firm on the vision and the dream and sharing the dream sharing with everyone that will listen and then people people come they help you know we're all building this together it's amazing really amazing and now i'm like right i've built it I'm, you can you can take it on i'm having a holiday <laughs> But they say, I mean, I, I have a friend, Chris Shaw, you know, and they, they believe in something called an asset based community development. And the yeah. assets are the individual attributes or skills of the individuals. So the first mm. thing is that the individual yeah. needs to know their skills and abilities. Yeah, there's no point in trying to learn something that they're naturally not sort of um, comfortable with. Because that's what the curriculum does. It wants you to be a standard Borg across the whole spectrum, right? And dissipate your energies. So really is in these new schools, I feel that you watch the seed, see where the seed's going to grow, see yeah. the direction, see how the light impacts upon it, and then look at the direction and provide it with the fertilizer yeah. and the water and the, uh, the environment. Now, one might be a really fragile sort of, snapdragon or some sort of flower that's fragile you know and then mm -hmm. right and one might be a hardy like weed type thing that can get its way through anything there's no mm -hmm. point in trying to get the weed to become the pansy and no. vice versa <laughs> so yeah. so i honestly see in my mind as well that there's 12 attributes 12 skills 12 intelligences 12 stargates 12 portals 12 whatever you want to call them 
each has a different frequency and a different job to do. And that 12 will work together. And then that 12 will meet up with another 12. And in my mind, I see all these dodecahedrons going <laughs> right around the whole globe. Yeah. And filling in all the gaps, you know. I love that. I love that. And then if you're working with what you're good at, right? If you're working, it's then easy. you'll feel joy. Yeah, and you yeah. feel joyful. And somebody, yeah. you know, rather than somebody says, Oh, you're crap at that. No, no. I'm crap at that, and you're good at that, Billy, but I'm good at this, you know. Yeah. And what we begin to realize is when we work with our innate abilities just to go to A, B, C, D, asset-based community development, you know, my, my mate Chris Shaw says often, he says, lead by stepping back. That's what mm, the leaders do. They good. lead by stepping back, you know. Yeah. And, and, and it's, a, it's a sort of scaffolding approach, which is well known in education, where the leader when you're going through tough times, they'll show you how to do it. They'll step back, watch if you're any good. If you're not too good, they step in again, give you a bit more confidence. And then when you get good, they give you a bit more rope. They give you a bit more rope. And sooner yeah. or later, it's like mountain climbing. Sooner or later, they take the rope off you and you look behind, right? And you realize that you've been on your own for a bit, you know, and you're doing it. So that's why we need to help one another. The other thing is I don't see things as linear. You know, I don't see up and down, higher and lower. I see the soul as a globe. It's a sphere. Mm -hmm. So somebody might need to plug in that part of the sphere. And when they've done that bit, they might become whole. Somebody else might, mm -hmm. might be at south, southwest. You know, they need to plug that bit in and they become whole. So my mind doesn't work in that linear way. It sees things in a more global sort of a way, really. So is that what stars are? I would say so, because we, oh. we tend to look, don't we? And we think of stars and we have a two dimensional perspective. But if yeah. you work about it, all stars, the sun, the moon, everything else, the spheres, yeah. aren't they? The spheres, mm. really. And that's why when they it's like the chakras, the chakras are like ball burnings in my mind. And when a chakra moves, it, the bottom one can move that way. The, the next one can move that way. It's like mm. balls on top of one another and they can move up and down, east, west, north, south. And each one of those connections represents another stream of information that comes in. But you have to get out of the way and not try and manipulate it. If you get out of the way and allow this all to naturally reset, this is the real great reset. If you allow them to naturally reset, then they will provide the information that you need on that day. And here's the next important point. I'm not off going on here, but it's important. If you think you know what you, you need to do, Think again, just get out of the way. Right? <clears throat> yeah. Because when you're really, really sure about something, it's probably not a good position to be in. You know, mm. always important to have an element of doubt, right? Just mm. in case that you're wrong. You know, I really believe that's true. But what I'm trying to say is, right, things have to unlock themselves in a sequence. It's, it's a bit like a big safe cracking thing, but we don't operate the, the controls, you see. So I might say, I'm going to the gym today to work on my biceps, right? But I ask my heart and the heart says, no, you need to work on your gluteals today. But my head says, oh, no, I think it's biceps. Mm. But the heart says, please believe me, Joe, work on your glutes today and you'll get a surprise. So you go, oh, all right then. So you work on your glutes and suddenly you feel a flush of energy coming up and you've never been stronger in your biceps. So it's like <laughs> cross training, you see. I love that. Christ, we don't half go on. Well, I do. You just sit there <laughs> listening. You, you just sit there listening, smiling. <clears throat> no, I love listening to you talk. You just, you just a, a wealth of knowledge. I love it. But, but knowledge is one thing. But you, you've got to do it. You know, there's a phrase in AA. You know, it says it works if you work it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. No, it okay. says that uh, the spiritual life is not a theory. We have to act upon it. You know. Mm -hmm. mm, we do. Quick question. Uh, so when we see shooting stars, is that a soul coming in? I don't know. I've never thought about it, but it depends which direction it's going on. It might be a, might be a soul leaving. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It just came to me as we were talking. Yeah, but I don't know. I think um, I think each, each individual star, uh, each star represents a human being. Right, yeah, or other, yeah. or other being, you know, and I, I don't get too much into the, um, you know, I've gone through the whole gamut of working with the angels, 
and um, understanding different dimensions. And some people think it's different planets. And I don't get too heavily involved with that because I think to want to know which planet you're coming from and all that, it can be a sort of a trap and keep you locked in your head, really. So, well, so yeah, I went you know, through I that. To... And I, now I'm going even higher. Once I let go of where I thought I was from, now I just keep going higher and higher and higher. But, yeah, well, see, I see your higher as my deeper. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's also for courses. It's what, what you feel, really, you know. And I think some people might have to get information from this way down, and some people have to get information from this way up, you know. And I think what they do is they tend to meet in the hearts, and then the, there's like a mixing bowl in the hearts. And once the mixture's taken place and all the chemicals are burnt off and all that, there's a pure answer then that there's no this and that. It's just this is, this is it, you know. So in, in the end, if you put information into your heart and you say heart will or soul, will you choose for me? That's called a sort of um, non-dual awareness, it's called really. Choiceless awareness. Because the, the, it's this that chooses. And if it chooses one way, there's always an element of maybe I should have chose the other one. You know, if it doesn't go according to the ego's plan. Mm -hmm. But if you go into your heart and you start to trust it, there's no choice. It's just you know what to do. You know. Yeah. And that's how you operate, really, is it? I don't know what to do, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask me hard to guide me. And you just start you, you you're almost like riding on the information. You know like that picture you put up about the eagle and the crow or whatever it was, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's a bit like we're the little crow thinking it's good this. It's a bit like that yeah. film avatar, you know, when they're on that thing giving giving loads of loads of that, you know. It's yeah. almost like flying past, right, and having confidence that this thing that you're riding on. We'll look That's after it. you as well and take you I to just, the right place. I ride on my heart. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I do. I, I sort of, yeah. I go with it, you know, and I sort of, I think, I wonder where we're going today, you know. Yeah. It's Am I like that all the time? People. No, I'm not like that all the time. You know, there's still an element of me that when I get tired, I can feel the old thing, the old self coming in, you know. Mm. And but when I've got that feeling, I sort of say to me heart then, and I get what you'll do, and they go, go to sleep. Go to sleep. Right. Go to <laughs> yeah. sleep. Right. I feel hungry. Have something to eat. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I'm trying to lose weight. Are you hungry? <laughs> yeah. Have something to eat. <laughs> my granddad said, he used to say, my granddad, you know, and he, he like is, is consciousness, feelings, thoughts, memories, whatever. That comes in all the time. You can only eat one butty at a time. You can only <laughs> smoke one cigarette at a time. You can only drink one drink at a time. Just do one thing at a time. Okay. Yeah, I know. Well, the, our bodies are so intelligent. You know, I, I I eat far, far, far less these days, and it is getting less and less and less. But uh, you know, and I can just keep going, and I don't, you know, I, I have two meals a day, and they're not huge. You know, what I eat is probably a quarter of what I used to eat on a plate, and what most people probably still eat. A lot of people do. Yeah, I don't have say, breakfast. Well, I don't yeah. break my fast until after midday. Well, funnily enough, I'm the same. And over the last six weeks, I've dropped 10 pounds, right? Just yeah. by, I'm on this uh, intermittent fasting thing, which just suits me. And mm. I don't, I don't eat anything till 1130 in the morning. Right. Mm. And then I don't eat anything after 730 at night. So, and it's working, mm. you know, and, uh, you know, I'm sort of Either. dropping about two pound every week, you know, and, yeah. and, and I'm not looking for, like, I'm not mad about it because I think it's going to take me to what's naturally comfortable for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it does. So, so, you know, and, and I don't have I don't have those sort of feelings that I'm starving now. I need to eat something, you know, and I've sort of been told that my, my sort of basal metabolic rate. Right. Probably just needs about twelve hundred calories a day, whereas the mm. old figures for a male. Right. It used to be three and a half that uh, three and a half thousand calories that, a day. You know? That was the guidelines, was it? It was the guideline. Yeah. Yeah. Crikey. Three and a half thousand and two thousand eight hundred for a woman, you know. Crikey. But yeah. now you can, I could probably survive a thousand to twelve hundred calories now. <coughs> but what I got told was, and this is a bit, bit further down the line, is no, Joe, we're preparing you for breatharianism. I thought, hang on, hang on, I right. love eating. Don't take me food away from me because I love That's eating. That's what I keep saying. I'm like, no, but I love food. I love it. It's, the, it's all the, the flavors, the sensations, not necessarily eating. Yeah, I'm not giving up food just yet. No, no. So here's the next thing. People have been yeah. asking, you know, they've, they've heard rumours that we might be doing something on August the 4th, is it? Yeah, 4th of August, yeah. 4th of August in Manchester. 
Okay, well, the situation is, that's true. Lisa, myself, Maker Pathway Louise, Jimmy Bongo, Paul Luftenegger, Kate Lumley from Texas, we're all hoping to meet together in Manchester somewhere. Um, uh, the thought was Gorton Monastery, but we don't know whether we'll be able to get that. But, you know, we'll be able to find a place. And we're just sort of going with this, you know, to see what happens. So if anybody feels inclined and they'd like to come along and we can all meet together. Um, we don't know what the theme is because the theme will just sort of develop itself. But I, I had to think because Kate Lumley has a, a thing called Utopia. You know, she's, she works with Utopia. She's had this vision since she was young. You know, I've got a thing called the I am approach, you know, and I think I said something like, um, I can't remember what I said now. I am following. Oh, yeah. Um, Louise is make a pathway, Louise. I am following a pathway to uh, utopia, you know. So mm -hmm. it will basically be the overarching vision will be getting together, turning the world upside down and making the world a better place based upon our individual unique capabilities, you know. And I've called it soul, uh, not soulology, that's another thing, you know, soulocracy and <clears throat> collective individuality. Because I think that there's a big move at the moment, right, to get everybody thinking the same way. And I think that might be a trap, right? So I think it's to help people to work with their innate intelligences and what's natural for them and to allow all of us to allow these natural intelligences to start working and cooperating together so that we can go forward and have the courage and the strength and the power and everything else. Uh, does that make some sort of sense? Mm, does to me. Yeah. And I love it. I love that we're all coming together going, no idea what we're doing, but it'll, yeah. it'll all just come together. It will all flow. I mean, even when I did that little short video for Jimmy um, and I ended up publishing it anyway on my page, you know, I thought, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. But as soon as I turned the camera on, it just all came out, came through. So that's how it's going to work. And I think it, my thing is that I think that scoundrels and scallywags, right, and the salt of the earth, I think that this is going to start from yeah. the bottom up. You know, I really yeah, feel it that. It's from the bottom up and from the inside out, because I think for a long, long time, without getting too political about it, I think we've, a lot of us have allowed ourselves to be directed by forces that have kept us down. And I think that those days are over now. They are. We're back. <laughs> we are. Oh, we are, we're back and, um, you know, <laughs> bring it on. That's the way I Time feel to about it. some feathers. So on that note, kiddo, um, <laughs> have you got any final feelings or anything like that? I'm hungry. That's, that's, that's all that's on my in my stomach at the moment. <laughs> right. Well, it's past well, my eating you. time. I'm not having it. Right. Oh, you're not having it? Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I had beans on toast before we started. Right. And so. Oh, you prepared. Some beans on toast and bananas and mandarin with cream. Right. Oh, that's so retro. Out of yeah, a tin. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's. See, <laughs> and there's another thing is that's what I love. You see, I love, yeah. I eat what I feel like. Right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I won't be directed by anybody else's <laughs> thoughts or whatever's that I should be eating. I allow my soul to choose what mm. do you want to eat? And I get beans on toast, right? And bananas <laughs> and cream. Okay. And when I have it, even in a small quantity, it satisfies that feeling. Yeah. Brings you joy as well, doesn't it? Absolutely. I love it very well. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 all right so thanks very much and uh we didn't know this was happening tonight but I'm, I'm glad you. that we did yeah. and um let me just have a feel before we go yeah uh, I, I would just suggest to people based upon my own experiences that um the more you've got no idea probably that's the best state to be in follow that yeah. follow, follow no idea and you'll you'll get a clear path right to yeah. Where you're <laughs> which yeah doesn't make I'm, sense from what we were told but that's how it works yeah. And more than anything else is just don't expect anything really. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Just do what you feel like doing from moment to moment and it'll yeah. just build itself, you know. Don't right, expect love. because that's that's you put it that you put limitations because what, what is coming for every single one of us is far, far, far greater than we can ever imagine. Far greater. Yeah. And I every feel day, that. every day I'm experiencing this now. I feel that so much. Right. Mm -hmm. My regards to Dan. And yes, um we'll do. And Speak to you soon. Speak soon. Love you. Right. Love you too. Bye, darling. Bye. Bye love. <laughs>
do, 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 do. Get me out of here. How do we do this? Stop. There we go. End. End again. Is it the end? <laughs>